Welcome to St. Hugh's on this All Saints Day. We remember those saints that are named by the church and those saints that are known to us alone. And we celebrate them. So, if you are hearing the drip, drip, drip of worry, turn the faucet all the way off. If you're carrying a heavy load, let that lay it down. Take a deep breath. And in the next few minutes, be centered in God. Open your heart to God's word. Open your heart as you pray for others. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. As we begin the month of November, uh, we feature in our song of praise the hymn, all people that on earth do dwell. And one of the really fun things about the online service is that we can feature choirs and uh, choristers from other churches. So this hymn is being sung by the choristers of the Bishop Heber Chapel of the Madras Christian College in Chennai, India. And according to their homepage, the Madras Christian College has been serving humanity since 1837. So lift your hearts as you hear the voices of the choristers of the Bishop Heber Chapel of the Madras Christian College in Chennai, India. God, the maker, redeemer, and sanctifier of all believers, we praise and glorify your holy name for all your servants who have finished their course in your faith and fear, for the Blessed Virgin Mary, for the holy patriarchs, prophets, and apostles, and for your martyrs and for all other of your righteous servants, known and unknown to us. 
And we pray that, encouraged by their examples, aided by their prayers, and strengthened by their fellowship, we also may be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Following the example of God's righteous servants, known and unknown, I invite you to attend now to God's holy word, the word that nourished, sustained, encouraged, and inspired the actions of the saints the church recognizes and the saints dear to our hearts. This lesson presents a vision of those who have survived great tribulation and now worship before the throne of God and the Lamb. A reading from the book of Revelations. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessings and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and glory and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, Who are these robed in white and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of water of life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Our psalm response is a hymn of blessing and praise to the Lord for deliverance, a reading from Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me, and he saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him.
In this lesson, we learn that through God's love, disciples are now children of God. Their destiny is to be like Christ. A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do now is this. When He is revealed, we will be like Him, for we will see Him as He is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
The gospel is the opening saying of the Sermon on the Mount, words of both comfort and challenge. The holy gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then Jesus began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Having heard the word of God, I want to focus on the first letter of John, the reading from there that you heard, and in particular, the very first verse of that reading. The Apostle writes, See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. On this day when we celebrate uh, saints, whether you've had the best mother or the worst mother, the best father or the worst father, the best female role models or the worst, the best male role models or the worst, somewhere along the line, the fact that you're here listening to the word of God, offering the prayers for others, desiring to nurture your spirit means that somewhere along the line, you have encountered one or more of God's saints. And what a blessing that is. And my hope is, no matter, again, your own family or those who have come into your life uh, throughout your life, no matter all of that, somewhere you heard the truth that the apostles spoke. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And indeed, if you recall passages from John's Gospel, we're told that God so loved the world, not just you, so loved the world that he gave his only son. Later, Jesus would say, you're not servants, you're my friends. And in another place, he tells his apostles, you know what, greater love than this, no one knows that one would lay down his life for the one he loves. All through John's gospel and this first letter, it's about love, a self-sacrificing love, a humble love, an enduring and faithful love. And this love is yours and mine. What a gift God has given us. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, that we should be lavished in this love, this love revealed in Jesus Christ, a love that first calls us friends 
and then through the death, resurrection, and ascension, sons and daughters of the living God, brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ, all in that self-sacrificing, enduring, faithful, holy love. It is a tremendous gift. And again, my hope is that somewhere in your lifetime, actually my belief is, somewhere in your lifetime, that love has been revealed to you, shared with you by a saint. Perhaps one of the saints we're celebrating this day. Treasure that knowledge. Treasure that truth passed on to you by one of God's saints. The Apostle reminds us that we've been given a great gift by God, that is, to be called what we are, children of God, beloved children of God. I invite you to hear the words of the poet Edwina Gately, as she invites us to revel in that love, to enjoy that gift that God has given us. Edwina's poem is entitled, let your God love you. Be silent, be still, alone, empty, before your God. Say nothing, ask nothing, be silent, be still. Let your God look upon you that is all. God understands. God loves you. God loves you with an enormous love. God only wants to look upon you with that love. Quiet, still, be. Let your God love you. Amen. We are separated, of course, by time and by space, and yet we're united through the internet, and we're also united heart to heart in the truths that had been passed on to us by the saints in our lives. And we trust what has been handed on to us and we now express that trust and these truths in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Undoubtedly, the saints whom we celebrate today have encouraged you to pray for others inspired you to pray for others, and perhaps even inspired your prayers. Also, they have encouraged you to trust that the one to whom we pray hears and answers us in the ways that are best for us. Please join now 
in the prayers of the people. In peace and in faith, let us offer our prayers saying, Christ have mercy. For peace in the world and for the salvation of all, let us pray, Christ have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, our bishop, Daniel, our priest, and for all the people of God, let us pray, Christ have mercy. For all who hold authority in our nation, that they may work together for the good and welfare of everyone, let us pray, Christ have mercy. For the leaders of the nations of the world, that they may bring peace to our world, let us pray, Christ have mercy. In thanksgiving for the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray, Christ have mercy. For all those in danger of any kind, and for all those who will come to their aid and protection, let us pray, Christ have mercy for children who are sick, in trouble or frightened, and for all who care for them, let us pray, Christ have mercy. For all who are sick from the coronavirus, and for those helping to make them better, let us pray, Christ have mercy for all who have died, especially those we have loved and those saints precious and dear to us. Let us pray, Christ have mercy. We conclude our prayers this morning with a collect that is especially written as we remember the saints in our lives. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask all these prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Knowing that we are not perfect, knowing that we've left things undone and really done other things we ought not to, we turn to our God, again trusting in God's hearing us, answering our prayers, and forgiving us through Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And now it is my privilege as a priest in the Episcopal Church to offer this word of pardon and assurance, this word of absolution. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
keep you in eternal life. Amen. Having heard the word and confessed our sins, received forgiveness, let us, let me, bless you and thank you for being here. May the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love revealed to you by the saints in your lives, may that love draw you close and hold you close. May the power of our Lord Jesus Christ empower you to share the knowledge of that love and the experience of that love. The power of our Lord Jesus Christ empower you to share the good news of God's love. The joy of our Lord Jesus Christ, a joy promised his disciples, promised you. May that joy sustain you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, in every circumstance of your life. May that joy sustain you, comfort you, and encourage you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is entitled, Let Saints on Earth in Concert Sing. It's written by Charles Wesley. And in its first verse, it definitely speaks the truth of our faith, the communion of saints, that those still laboring here on earth and those who have finished their course on earth are united by the love of God. Listen to that first verse especially. Let saints on earth in concert sing with those whose work is done. For all the servants of our King in heaven and on earth are one. Please enjoy this hymn. Sing along at home, if you will. Let saints on earth in concert sing. Once again, I thank you for joining us on this All Saints Day. And I invite you now, brothers and sisters, let us go into the world in the power of the Spirit, in fact, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit, 
that we might share the good news of God's love come to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us go in the name of Christ. Amen.